Hi guys, this is Tina. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here for what is hopefully going to be the last episode in our using our mass made items in a journal. Um, obviously, hopefully this is kind of familiar to you guys. Hopefully you've been following along and I don't need to do the introduction as to what this is. Uh, but I will link the series um, at the end of this video so that you can go back and check out the other videos for if you have missed it. But basically we have been using the items from our mass making workshops that we've been doing on a Tuesday. Now all I had left to do in this journal, I've got um, two pages and the back, the inside of the back cover. I don't know whether I will even do the other page, I might just leave that as an extra, you know, an extra page because actually the journal as you can see it's pretty full now. Um, so I don't think it necessarily needs another page decorated, I think it's, you know, I think it's pretty full on its own. Um, we'll see how we get on really and you know what we're doing time wise as to whether or not we do that. So I didn't really know what to do for the inside of the back cover but I thought I would share my um, idea with you really. So what I did was obviously on the inside of the front cover I tried to marry it up with what I had done on the facing page and I had used this scrapbooking paper in this beautiful green colour um, to do that. Now normally I quite like to have the inside of each of the front and the back in the same or similar papers. Not always, you know, that's not, not a rule or anything, but quite often I, I like that. Um, so I have covered, obviously, the inside of the back cover in the same paper. Now, unfortunately, I only have one sheet of this paper left. So obviously, by the time I'd done the inside of the front cover, I didn't have enough to do the inside of the back, if you see what I mean. Hence, I'm left with this gap here. So what I have decided to do, and I thought, you know, hopefully you might find this a useful tip as well for if you have a similar thing happen, is with this skinny strip that I have got left, I'm going to make a little pocket here on the edge. So that will be my decoration for that page and also my, my pocket piece for that page. So all I'm going to do is literally glue that down in place along that page. So I would just place my glue there and I'll just glue up to where I kind of roughly think that might finish because as you can see obviously I've got a bit here so I don't want it going right on and I want to be able to trim that off at the edge of the page. So that makes sense hopefully that makes sense to you you guys so hopefully you can see that now what I've got here on the back I can then trim that round and make that you know neatened up and tidied up so I just do that now so that then if I need to slide it around or anything I've just got a little bit of flexibility you know with regards to moving it around before the glue dries now I use that tacky glue which I you know that's generally my my go-to glue and although it's fast drying you know it's not that fast it gives you a little bit of breathing space if you need to move your move your piece around at all so let's just have a look let's get rid of those okay so that's looking okay now what I need to do is decide now on my images for obviously this page and this page. Now I hope this isn't creating a really large shadow. Let me just have a look. Because I mean actually this is the same day that I did the last episode but obviously I didn't want to give you guys a kind of two hour episode or anything so I thought I'd best break it into two videos. Um, but for me it's the same later that same day. Now I'm just going to go through and see what other images I have got left from that book. And would you believe it? I now can't see them anywhere. Oh, maybe I have used them. Maybe I have actually used them, to be honest. I mean, it's not a big deal because I haven't used anywhere near all the images from the book. So, I mean, I can just bring the book back in and find some more images in the book. So let me just double check. 
Oh, that's really strange, isn't it? Right, okay, let me pull the book back in. And we'll just have a look through, only because these images that I've got here, there's nothing particularly green other than this with the silkworm, which I'm not that keen on. Um, I don't think the others are necessarily really pulling me, you know, to use with that green. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to tear that one down a bit. I'm going to pop these back into the book so I've got them for another project. And then I'm just going to go back through. Oh, I don't love that page. And just see what images I've got that might be really nice with that green paper. Um, just flicking through. Oh, can you see that? That Shetland pony, isn't that gorgeous? And this sheepdog, beautiful. So I might have to go with that sheepdog because that is so cute. I might have mentioned this before, but when I was a child, I always said I was going to have a sheepdog, um, you know, when, when I grew up. And, um, yeah, I just thought they were the most gorgeous dogs on the planet. As it then transpired, I'm actually allergic to, um, well, I don't know whether I would be allergic to sheep dogs, but I'm allergic to a lot of breeds of dogs. I'm allergic to cats, I'm allergic to horses, I'm allergic to pugs, labradors, um, uh, what else, sausage dogs, all those kinds of things. I might not be allergic to a sheep dog because that's not got that type of hair, so I might be okay with that. But what is quite sad is that actually my husband and um, my eldest son is also allergic to all of those and what's more annoying I might have um, told you about this before we're all allergic to different breeds of dogs so the sad thing is you know we've never found a dog that all of us are okay with um, you know which is such a shame because I obviously as a child really pictured my life with with definitely at least a dog you know, if not actually, you know, sort of a few pets maybe. But yeah, it wasn't really to be. So um, maybe, maybe this. Um, yeah, so kind of sad really. But I mean, I just, uh, it's more sad for the children, obviously. I mean, as an adult, you kind of move past these things, don't you? And then see the benefits of not having pets and think, well, Actually, thank goodness, it would just be something else to have to clear up after and all of those kind of practical reasons why it's quite nice not having pets. Um, but yeah, it's a shame for my daughter and it's a shame for my my middle son because obviously they're not allergic and they both absolutely love dogs. Well, they love animals, you know, all animals. And um, it's a shame because obviously they can't actually have one. <laughs> so... And I mean, loads of people have kind of said, oh, what about this dog or what about that? Or, But honestly, we have tried all sorts of different dogs. We spent a time looking for a dog, you know, trying to find one that we would all be okay with. And after about, you know, 10 weeks of looking, we sadly had to just give up because we actually couldn't find one at all. So, yeah, it was a bit of a shame, really. But I also had a rabbit um, once. And funnily enough, I was fine with the rabbit when it was a, you know, sort of baby. And then as it grew, I assume its coat changed and I then became allergic to the rabbit as well. So, um, yeah, obviously allergic to rabbits as well. But again, they've got that sort of similar hair to like a pug and a Labrador and those kinds of things. And weirdly, my husband, he's allergic to every single breed of dog that we've ever looked at. Except, would you believe, the pug. That was the one that he was not allergic to at all. And that was the one that my son and I were really allergic to. So it was just very bizarre. So, you know, clearly, obviously, a dog... A dog was not meant to be in our, our plans, was it? So, um, yeah, I've decided to look at it from a practical point of view and just think, well, you know what... It's not meant to be, it's not meant to be, and actually talk about save you, yes, another job, really. Um, you know. But it's a shame, because, um, you know, things like this, I just absolutely find gorgeous. Although, I can't imagine how much hard work a sheepdog would be. 
you know, if you took them for a walk or something in the wet weather. And then they're coming home with their coat absolutely drenched, shaking everywhere. Oh, what a nightmare. Would just be oh awful. Plus they must really eat a lot of food, which, um, you know, I guess that must be quite expensive, to be honest. Right, I'm having a look to see what I can find to decorate this page up with while I'm waffling. Uh, and I just spotted here beside me this green ribbon. It was just on the floor. And I just thought, actually, I wonder if I could do something with that, like a little tie around here. Because isn't that a perfect match to this paper? I mean, I really love green and this is just such a Ooh, yummy, yummy colour green, isn't it? So I just cut that there. I'll just move that to one side. Okay. I'll just kind of try and hold that down a little bit. Probably not the greatest idea to hold it down with my scissors, to be fair, because I'm obviously going to be using those in a minute, so I'll do it with that paint instead. Right, so we've got this gorgeous little sheepdog, which, oh, so cute. Uh, now, what other things can we pop on here? <clears throat> now, this page is obviously quite a big space and a big page to fill. So we've got quite a bit of, you know, flexibility and things with that. So I'm just going to bring my ruffles in. I already made ruffles. Because I'm pretty sure that I must have... You know some really nice ruffles that I could use there. I've got some more of that one. Mm, that's a bit drab. I don't think I've got any big ones in this fabric which is really annoying. Um, I've only got tiny handmade ones, you know hand stitched ones I think. Let me just check in my ruffle jar. Hold on. I don't think I have and this is why you know as crafters we can just never have enough stuff because no matter how much stuff you've got you're always going to want the one thing that you haven't got so I mean that's not really quite right is it no oh that's such a shame let me just bring this one in I've got a few more stitch ruffles here Finally got some pink plain fabric, hot pink. The amount of times that I had made things and said, oh, I must get some hot pink plain fabric. Finally got some. So I've made a couple of ruffles. And weirdly, since I've made them, I haven't needed it at all. The only reason I pulled this black out is because obviously he's got the black. So um, I just wondered whether that might have been good. But no, I don't think that's quite the thing either. Let me put these out the way. Now obviously I've got the rest of the white, which you know there's not that much left of that either, that we used on the inside of the front cover. I could go with that. What else have I got here? I've got some ivory, that's not quite right. Mm. Just having a little rummage here, just seeing what else I've got. Just laying around. You know, I'm bound to have obviously something. I mean, it's just so handy having just such a lot of rubbish because um, you always can find something, you know. Right, ah, okay. I've got some more of that fabric, but a longer strip. So although this is not in a ruffle, I'd probably torn this down actually to machine stitch some ruffle and then I never obviously got around to it. But what I could do is just have that as a trim down there. Now I'm wondering, do I want to have my dog here or actually on the pockets? I might just have it here. And then I could 
use up the white ruffle somewhere like that I think now what else do I need so if we're gonna have this which is quite brown maybe I need something brown over here let's just have a bit of a rummage around see what else I've got I've got some paper bag which I could could incorporate that somewhere let me just ink this page up a little bit because obviously that's probably not helping because it looks quite stark at the moment. So I'll just ink the paper, piece of paper bag up. Like that. Oh gosh, come on. Ink the dog up. Like that. Yeah, I think I've talked about it before, but my sisters have both got two dogs, two dogs each now. Only quite recently, actually, they've both got two, two dogs. My older sister has got, um, uh, I think they're called Cavapoos. Has she got Cavapoos? I think they're Cavapoos, um, which are like, actually, they're not, they're not Cavapoos, they're... Are. Anyway, they're a poodle cross with. Yeah, they must be those. Um, cross with a King Charles Spaniel. Um, super cute. And then my younger sister, she's got two dogs which are sausage dogs, um, which are, again, obviously super cute. But I have to say, wow, hard work hard work so um again I kind of just think oh well <laughs> you know it's not the end of the world to not have dogs really because it would just be you know yet another thing to uh mess the house up and you know have to be tidying up afterwards which uh, who wants to be spending their time tidying up anyway right Now, maybe I'm not finding that that's working brilliantly. I think what I'm going to do is glue this down so that I'm committed. My daughter's just telling me to tell you guys that she would love a dog. I did tell them. I told them just now. She obviously wasn't listening to my rabbiting on, was she? There we go. And just trim that down there. Okay, I do really find it helps to just, you know, commit to, to some bits onto the page because all the time it's still free. There's so much room for then chopping and changing my mind. So once the pieces are stuck on, it's, you know, it's quite good, I think. No more. No more time for chopping and changing. Now, what I might do is, um, in the last one, we pulled in a paper pack, which now we're sat on. Hold on. Which had some labels on it and little, you know, words and quotes and what have you. Now we're there at the back. No, they must have been at the front. And I just wonder whether it's got anything that we could use on this that might look kind of cute. No, 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 no. What does that say? Now my... Now my heart now my heart is free of you oh full of you i thought wow that's not a very um <laughs> very nice quote now my heart is free of you no it said now my heart is full of you right so let's just tear these out i mean it's 
great as well to kind of just use up some of these bits that otherwise I'm not really using up. So, okay. don't know whether I will use these, but I just thought I'd pull them in and have a look. So, tear that down and tear that down. Okay, so, just wondered whether we could have the... Mm. I mean, just sometimes you can't get things to come together, can you? And um, it's really frustrating. Just felt a bit like I needed something else brightening the, the page up. So I'm going to do the same as I did with that other one and tear this down slightly. just don't really like having those neat square edges so we'll just tear those down okay and then I might just ink this up because then I'm sure that would look a lot better as well Kind of hard to ink it up now because there's not much there to actually hold on to it's just moving about a bit but there we go now i don't need to ink up the top too much because hopefully that wouldn't really be showing so okay so i'm wondering if we had this tucked in here and then had our now which side did i ink off that i think we did that side let's go in Go in, go in. Oh, come on. Don't know why that wasn't working. And then maybe the dog there, or maybe the other way up. So maybe this piece here, and then maybe the dog there. Oh, that's quite cute, isn't it? Yeah, I like that. And then here, just going to again tear this little sentiment down. And I will ink this up like that. Okay, so I'm just going to glue that sentiment on there like that. And then I'm just going to glue this one down here. So let me just ink up that bit slightly visible so again just glue around there to be honest I didn't really need to actually glue the whole thing down I should have torn that that edge off but never mind sometimes things are too simple and just don't really occur to you well they don't occur to me they maybe do occur to other people but they don't occur to me always so all right let's think that around I don't know which way we we were having it but I think we'll have to have it that way because I liked the roundy the roundy top so I'll just glue that down like that so again just going into there a bit and like that okay my card and then where's my doggy on I'm gonna have the doggy there he looks so cute, doesn't he? Right, okay. So pop him there. Like that. Okay, gorgeous. Really cute. Now, I'm sure that I have got a couple of ready-made little bows in that green that I'm going to use on the other side. So we could pop one of those on for continuity. And I'm just going to have a look and see what word I have here that I could use. Oh, let's have wonderful perhaps. Wonderful, got love. Let's do wonderful. Oh, he's so cute. So again, I'll just pop those away. Obviously that's all inked up already because we did, you know, we made them like that. So I can just glue that one down like 
that as it is. And then just mop that up with my dried wipe. Okay, I'm just going to go down this a little bit more because it doesn't really look very inked up at the moment. So and it doesn't have to be really grungy or anything, but just a little bit more. That's it. And then do we want this white ruffle down the edge? Yes, I think we do. Yeah, I think we do. Otherwise, it just looks a little bit too green. Um, so it just needs kind of something breaking it up. Now, I'm just going to glue this fabric down here because um, it wasn't glued to the edge. And as I want to stick the ruffle sort of over the top of it, I need it to be, you know, glued down properly right to the edge. So there we go. Take that. There we go. I mean, actually, it's not really on the top of it, but it is a bit, it's kind of half on and half off, really. So, and I'm just going to make sure it's glued properly at the end because that's where it's been snipped. So, that's where obviously it would have a weak spot, as in, you know, the uh, stitching would be likely to come undone. Okay. Super, super, super cute. So now the only thing that I have left to do is this page here because I will probably now leave the um, the other page as a, you know, a plain page. Now, do we want to have something here, again, tying the colours in because then that just, you know, just helps with the, you know, the continuity between it. So I'm going to move this ribbon off because that's just in the way at the moment. And I'm thinking if we had that, now I just want to check that I haven't got the same type of embellishment on the following page. No, I haven't, so that's fine. So I'm going to tear this around. Again, I mean, I just like them, like them torn. Don't want straight, straight edges looking really neat. I just find that throws me a bit, but, and I'm going to have that there. So I'm just going to, again, tear this a bit because that's the straight edge where it's been in the book like that pop that there and that's going to come down there so it's quite nice you can still see the the dog fine so I'll just glue that down on on here like that oops Okay, and then I'm just going to glue my dog down. Okay, do I need to move that? No, it won't move now. It's already stuck. Okay. Now, you could have something like a little stopper here. Obviously, I'm not going to because it's going to obviously, um, you know, be over my dog's face there. So I'm not going to do that. Hence the ribbon here. Now, I'm still not 100% whether I like the ribbon or not. So actually, before I do that, I'm going to ink this piece all up. Oops. Like that. ink around the green as well and then I'm just going to ink it inside because obviously it is a fold out piece I don't really want it looking really stark inside and there we go and then on to here so obviously in the um, comments of the mass making um, workshops you know people have said about doing repeats and I mean, I know that sounds incredibly boring, but obviously, as we talked about, you know, a lot of my pieces are, I'm not saying running low, they're not running low, um, because they're still more than what I had to begin with, but they will be running low. So how do you guys feel about doing repeats? Um, you know, I don't mind the thought of that. And actually, lots of people have been so kind and said that they now view Tuesdays as their, their mass making day. Um, which is so lovely to hear and yeah I mean that's a bit how I view it so 
let me know below what you think to um, if we do some repeats because I don't want to obviously completely bore people but equally you know there's only or there will eventually come a time where it will be a limit to you know what we can do um, without doing repeats I guess or the workshops would stop um, plus obviously once we've used quite a few of a certain embellishment type you know we may need to do some repeats because we won't have any of them left in our box or whatever we're storing our mass made items in so uh, let me know what you think to that okay Oops. so yeah I mean as I say I'm filming these ahead I don't know when I'm going to actually be uploading these um, but hopefully you know hopefully it will be before Christmas um, so it might be that we'll go until January and then we'll have to do some some repeats and obviously it won't all be repeats because people are coming up with new ideas for journals all the time so it will be repeats of several of the items and then you know I'll probably see some other items or maybe other people will see some other items on other people's channels and maybe we'll do some mass makes of some other things you know that we haven't done that all yet um you know that's just how I kind of view it really and you know I might just continue with my my mass making and then I'll just switch the camera on and you can sort of dip in and out or yeah we'll kind of see how how it is really but you know I don't I would love it if obviously you would um you know continue to join me because I think it's been really good fun and um I mean, I know I've said before, I didn't really like the mass making concept um, initially, and I really struggled to make more than one of the same type of item. I found it just so completely boring. Uh, but now, weirdly, my head has kind of um, got round the concept of doing mass making, and strangely, I've now adopted that process in other areas of my life. Not, not other areas of my life, but other areas of my craft life. Um, oops. So I've found them quite handy and definitely making this journal using the mass made things has been awesome. So yeah, right. I might do that just before I do. I'm just going to have a look in my little box of um, bows because I think I have got a bow in that same ribbon that I've obviously made previously. So I just want to see whether I have. Oh, no, I haven't. Because I just thought that would be kind of um, fun to tie it in, to have the same ribbon. Okay, so I'm going to have to probably tie one, but I don't know whether we definitely even want a ribbon or a bow. Right, let me just pop that to the side now. And again, I have been meaning to do a little video on how I make my bows. I've got a few different ways that I do them. Um, so for this one, I'm just going to quickly do this, but we could do, you know, a whole uh, a whole video on the, the bow making, um, if you guys would like that. But I mean, I'm sure lots of you, you know, probably make lovely bows anyway. So there we go. Oh, and sometimes it takes ages then fiddling around with the with the legs to get a bow in kind of the shape and size that you want. You see, I'm thinking if we had that little bow opposite, it just again ties that ribbon in with the facing page. So, you know, kind of nice to do that, I think. So that being said, what I'm going to do is obviously glue that down. Oh, my three and one is just worse and worse every time I touch it now. Because obviously this is the same day, you know, for me filming as it was doing the last video. So still persevering with having my three and one tipped upside down so that I'm not shaking it around. And obviously I'm still waiting for my Amazon person. Oh gosh, there it goes again, tipping off the desk. 
my Amazon person to bring my new three in one. So, yeah, it's just ugh, getting gungier and gungier by the minute, which is just hideous, to be honest. Right, there we go. Okay, so I will pop that down and I might just have it. Yeah, so I'll just pop that down here on just two sides. So that it can be a little tuck spot there. Just press that down and then, oops, just get that seepy glue out. Okay, I'm just going to pop this bow. Oh gosh, my glue is like sticking on everything now. Right, I'm just going to pop that bow down here on my ruffle like that. Actually, I might just have it popped that way so it's not sort of in the way of the ruffle itself. There we go, that's cute. And it just ties the um, two bits in, which I just think is really nice. Now, I just want to have something down there. Oh, there goes that glue again. <laughs> oh, dear. Obviously, it's because I'm sort of balancing it up on the, the lid that it stood in. And, uh, yeah, it's not really balancing at all. Now... Let's have a look and see what we're going to just pop down that corner because it just does need a little something there. And, and then, oops, let's just have a look. Let me just have a look in my cupboard at my ham stitched ruffles. See whether I've got anything in there. I've got these blue ones. Which I know sounds really strange, but because I've just got that little bit of blue showing there, just wondered whether the blue might actually be quite good on here. Or does it just appear like, oh, where's the blue come from? Hmm. Well, what do you think? Because it's got the blue and the brown, which kind of picks up from there, which, you know, maybe, maybe can get away with. Oh, shall I be daring and go for that? Yeah, let's be daring. Let's be daring and go for that. So I'm just going to ink this up slightly. Now I don't want to go too mad because obviously I don't want to um, pull my hand stitched stitches out. Like that. Okay. So I was going to pop it down here but actually I think I'm going to pop it on to the piece itself because that just seems to bring it in slightly better whereas when it's down here it possibly seems a bit removed from the whole page I think so we'll just pop that down you see now that's because I would picked it up off the floor and didn't put it facing down and so now I've got to shake it and squeeze it and wait for it to run down so that was why it's Ooh, standing up like this in the first place, you know, upside down. Okay. Really, really cute. Sorry about that. That was my daughter now rummaging around with her kitchen stuff, just lolloping all over it. Okay. Right. I think that's probably it. I still, I feel something still is missing from here. I would say one of my button embellishments, but I don't like the fact I've got one on the page before. Because that just feels a little bit, you know, I haven't really had any others of those in here. So it seems a bit strange to suddenly have two, one after another. Um, let me just have a quick rummage around. Just see if I've got any of my flowers that could 
go on there. Just tie it in. No. No, no, no. Right. Let's just have a quick look. I mean, these maybe. They might be quite good. No. Isn't it strange how you try them and think that they're going to look good and then just doesn't really tie in at all. See, they are quite good, except for the yellow on them, which actually then doesn't really go with anything. It just seems to be adding, you know, another colour altogether. Oh, what a shame. Okay, right. My, don't want to go for any of those. Let's just have a quick rummage, see if I have anything else. Ooh, what's that? Got that little bit of ribbon that I mucked up using before. I quite like that. Now, do I have any of that left from... that I haven't stapled and kind of made a hideous job of stapling it? No, I don't think I have. Well, I'm sure I have, but I now just can't see it. And no doubt I'm going to try and pick these staples out and things and um, stick it down. And then the second I've stuck it down, I will obviously come across the original ribbon without all the staple holes and whatnot in it. So let's just try and pull these staples out as best I can. Or actually, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut this here that's where it seemed to go really badly adrift I think it's okay there and I'm going to go with it like that okay let's pop that down so come on glue Okay, so hopefully by the next video, my three-in-one will have arrived and um, I will no longer be having that whole ugh, gloopy glue thing going on. So hopefully that will all be good. Okay. Hold that down for a couple of seconds while it just glues into place. Right, so I think we're kind of done now. Um, so obviously I'm going to fill it up with some inserts and things like that. I'm going to do the outside covers um, and then I will be back with the flip through. But if you were following along and using some of your mass made items, I hope you had a great time and made, you know, a fantastic journal and really enjoyed yourself. And um, yeah, I hope that you will um, join me next time for some other you know, crafting and journaling fun. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all again soon. Thanks, Anne. Bye.